Hey guys, this is Mark Danda here, and I'm going to take you up through this module about OPT and what we've been doing for the past 10 years and how did we come to the point that we are right now. So here we are, uh, Sonia and myself, we started this clinic 10 years ago. Um, we decided to serve San Antonio centrally. That way uh, we can have access to people from any part of the town and uh, we would have a variety of different clients um, from different socioeconomic backgrounds. We really wanted to have diversity in the clinic from the, from the very get-go. And we wanted to offer both physical therapy and fitness also from the beginning. So where did our humble beginning start? At Five Points in downtown San Antonio. Uh, it was a warehouse, uh, roughly about 2,800 square feet with very limited parking. We were surrounded by other commercial buildings and uh, we actually outgrew this area pretty quick, probably within two years. So continuing about humble beginnings, again, physical therapy and fitness, we wanted to offer both to the, cl to the uh, clients. We thought that that would be the best way to help the community uh, and initially we saw only federal insurance, insurance groups like uh, Medicare helping the, the elderly, Medicaid for the, the, the poor and the, you know, the, the children. It was the way we started helping these two groups. And uh, it was primarily just myself. I was seeing not even 20 patients per week and uh, we were really relying on referrals from surrounding offices. We were marketing to them, asking for, for clients, any office uh, that had a medical doctor or orthopedic surgeon, anybody that could refer to physical therapy, basically. Uh, this got old really fast. <clears throat> we didn't uh, have any special therapies to offer anybody. You know, We were very much dictated on what insurance was paying and honestly, at that point, we, we really seemed like any other physical therapy clinic. You know, it was, um, it was very much uh, your standard type of therapy clinic that was mediocre. And, but we were aspiring to be something more than what we were. And uh, within two years, we did grow out of this space. So we were definitely moving in the right direction. So San Pedro was our second location. Initially, uh, you know, I talked about us wanting to combine physical therapy and fitness. Well, we wanted to continue this as well here. So we, we were still offering uh, fitness along with physical therapy. Uh, we were starting to seek out more commercial insurance providers, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, um, uh, Humana, even some of the local uh, management groups like WellMed. But we, we wanted to expand our reach to, to, to uh, more, more clients. Uh, we still offered no special therapies at this point. It was primarily, primarily just reimbursement from insurances. So our therapies were, were still limited. Um, and we had, we had two full-time physical therapists, myself and another therapist. And we worked together to, to see anywhere between, um, you know, I guess, uh, 60 to um, to 80 uh, uh, treatments a week. Uh, at this time, though, we were really starting to ask ourselves, what are other ways we can market uh, to the to the public? You know, marketing uh, to the community, uh, and we thought about direct marketing. We thought about directly going to the public, and 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 bringing the word of the clinic <clears throat> bringing awareness to uh to things like total knee replacements bringing awareness to to shoulder pain and back pain and how you don't have to rush into surgery to to uh to get better from stuff like that so we started to really invest some time and money and finding out more about how can we directly com uh, communicate and market to the public and our evolution 
really was a reflection of our business our business model how we started to to change or develop the the way we market how we started to change and develop the way we help patients out and a lot of that came from uh, starting to offer cash services we started with the deep tissue laser um, it was a big investment for the clinic it's very expensive it's a very expensive tool but we decided to to bring it on and uh, it, we saw great results with it and we started to open our mind to other other ways that we could uh, bring special therapies to the clinic uh, considering uh, deep tissue laser was the first the dry needling the acoustic wave then uh, we considered uh, cupping uh, techniques to to add to that uh, and we we considered the newbie right uh, but all of these special therapies required, you know, required cash uh, services. We had that because insurance wasn't willing to pay for it. So we had to come up with a comprehensive cash program to, to make it affordable for people for people and still cover the cost. Um, we also just continued to expand insurance providers. We continued to look for for more providers to um, to to reach out to help more people. And uh, this was, you know, this was a, this was reflected in, in the volume of, uh, of the clinic, the clinic, the clients, excuse me, in the clinic. Uh, this, we were, we just kept expanding our service to help people in different ways. So we were doing the special therapies, we were doing the cash services, and it was really helping out our clients. It was giving them uh, more coverage, right? We could offer more coverage for their therapy needs um, we didn't have to drop after a while we noticed okay you know we have a few insurance providers that are um, you know that the reimbursement is very poor uh, but we didn't we didn't want to drop them so so we had different ways to keep them with with our cash services and programs uh, but it, it was really offering it was really about offering more than just physical therapy and uh, we, we had a, a great way of doing that by offering um, these, these programs. So during, during this time, we also began to really seek out more education on our marketing techniques and our marketing model, right, for the clinic. Uh, understanding the difference between internal marketing and external marketing. How can we market to our clients so that we have retention? Not, not retention as keeping them on a plan of care indefinitely but once you know imagine having a client that we help them with a the plan of care they do they do great they graduate and a year or two down the down the road if they get hurt again or if they have another issue they know exactly where to come that's the kind of long-term value that that uh, we get with our clients but um, we understood how to how to achieve that right with the internal marketing <clears throat> and also the external marketing how do we go out in the community and f seek out new clients that don't that don't already know us that don't that have not bought anything from us or haven't even stepped in the clinic you know how do we get better at uh, marketing the clinic externally and we understood more about uh, participating in events maybe we were participating in running events or races uh, maybe we were doing talks um, on on certain uh, uh, subjects uh, maybe a workshop on lower back but what I'm saying is at this time we we really began to invest time and money on understanding our marketing model and and continue continually to continually uh, developing it and you could again see it in the clinic when we saw more more clients on the floor The development of our cash services really influenced the way the the way the clinic uh, was set up. Uh, we had to initially when we had, when we had cash services, we didn't have any private rooms. But as time went on, went on, we started to help certain groups of people that had certain disorders, for example, pelvic floor. And then all of a sudden, private rooms be, rooms became very nece uh, necessary. So we added those on as well, but it was really these additions was a reflection of what the clinic needed, what the people needed. And as, as we got further into uh, providing cash services and programs, uh, we had to also bring additional rooms,
symptoms and, and things to the clinic. So eventually we started to move to the direction of becoming a specialty clinic, a specialty for certain disorders, maybe Bell's palsy. Um, maybe uh, we were marketing to a, a special population, uh, people with lower back pain, uh, runners, uh, archers, uh, but we were definitely moving into a into a into a direction that set us up as the authority for those populations in the in the local community, and you know we just continued to develop though that skill of becoming the authority and and becoming a specialty clinic for those groups of people and have a greater impact in San Antonio, and that's what we continue to continue to do today. So as as you get um, more familiar with these talks of workshops or of marketing, external marketing, talking to these groups, you may want to consider, you know, who, what is a group that I can really relate with, that I can become the authority here in our local community. community. And we may, we may start to have you do talks and to do uh, workshops so that you can bring awareness to these people and bring them into the clinic.